When I was younger, The Secret of Monkey Island and Final Fantasy VIII were among a handful of games that helped me realize the potential of gaming as an art form. Guybrush Threepwood and Squall Leonhart helped show me that games were more than just getting high scores and that they could be a powerful storytelling tool. In turn, I was introduced to a pair of series and genres that I still love to this day. Monkey Island means a lot to me. So if that's a disclaimer you need heading into this review, there you go. But don't take that to mean I'd simply gush over the series' first release in over a decade. That couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, when the code hit my inbox, I hesitated. I was scared to start it, to find that the game was a far cry from the series that I had revered for so long, to find that returning to the series would be a mistake, to find that maybe Guybrush's adventure wasn't for me anymore. And so, after 12 hours of swashbuckling, punning, and pirating, I am 100% totally ready to give you an ultimate verdict, and I am not in any way hedging or procrastinating or delay. Oh, look behind you! Uh, Three-headed monkey! Huh. I swore I saw one. Anyway, let's talk about Return to Monkey Island. Thirteen years removed from the series' last release and nearly twenty years since lead developer and monkey guru Ron Gilbert was last involved, Return to Monkey Island's title is literal in almost a dozen different ways. In 2020, Ron Gilbert and Dave Grossman realized they wanted to come back to the series and tell the story they'd left unfinished all those years ago. You see, the pair set the Monkey Island ship out to sea in 1990 and worked on the first two titles before continuing their legacies elsewhere. They'd managed to check back in on the series a few times over the years, but had never quite finished the adventure they'd set up in the 90s. Famously, Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge, the last game in the series the two of them properly worked on together, ends on a fascinating yet frustrating cliffhanger that had puzzled fans for years. The kind of cliffhanger that genuinely comes out of left field and has you wondering just how the series could continue from there. I honestly couldn't tell you if this is a fake out ending. I genuinely don't remember the end of this game, actually. It would be such a, a, a big uh, swing, though, huh? LucasArts all but ignored that ending, but Gilbert always intended to finish what he had envisioned for a third game, but he left the company before he had a chance to do it. And so, after all this time, comes his chance. At last! Hello, Monkey Island! It's me, Guybrush! Did you miss me? Return to Monkey Island starts immediately after the cliffhanger of Monkey Island 2, but does so in a way that not only continues the story of Monkey Island 2, but manages to retain the canonicity of all of the rest of the series all at once. The explanation, which we won't spoil here, is extremely satisfying and is a genius recontextualization of every game in the series. Once that's out of the way, our story truly begins. And it begins in a very familiar and comfortable way. Ah, uh, feels good to be back on Melee Island. Guybrush Sleepwood, Mighty Pirate, is out to finally find the true and real secret of Monkey Island. He needs a ship and a crew, and so he heads to Melee Island, where the adventures all began to find them. Of course, our slapstick hero finds his plans halted as quickly as they started, when his rival, the evil ghost pirate LeChuck, has the only ship in the area and has poached the island of any viable crewmates. With no help provided from the new black magic-loving and decidedly punk pirate leaders, it's up to Guybrush to find his way to Monkey Island with the support of his friends. Some new, some old, almost all of them begrudging. There's his wife, the former governor Elaine Marley, who has her own adventure going on. Wally, the nearsighted map maker who wished he'd never met Guybrush. 
the mysterious voodoo lady whose shop is going out of business. Stan Stanman, the newly jailed but still charismatic snake oil salesman, and the fearsome fivesome that makes up LeChuck's crew on the aptly named The Ship. What ensues are a series of expectedly unexpected guybrush successes, usually at the cost of anyone who dares pose an obstacle to his goals, across a wholly enjoyable five-part story that feels like one of the grand pirate adventures the series always aimed to emulate. While there's tons to enjoy for anyone who's been a fan of the series from the start, it feels like an approachable adventure for newcomers as well. Hey, want to see my mighty pirate scrapbook? It's filled with my adventures. The game is, in its own way, all about nostalgia. All about returning to a familiar place and seeing how things have changed. How a world, a community, a place can morph into something both recognizable and unfamiliar at a moment's notice. The player and Guybrush are both in sync as you stroll from the Melee Island lookout post down to the scum bar. You're both shocked when you find how the game's new art style paints these familiar haunts. It's the same, but not. You go and talk to the pirate leaders, only to see the stereotypical old pirate trio replaced by rowdy, makeup-wearing, graffiti-spreading youngins. It's the same, but not. This feeling lingers from beginning to end. It's meta, familiar, and powerful. Gilbert, Grossman, and Guybrush talk about finishing what they started, no matter the cost, no matter what it means, to go back to some place or some forgotten goal long after you've left it. Everyone's feeling a little bit replaced. A little bit like the world has moved on without them. Like they might not belong. I was declared a historical landmark. But it's about pushing forward regardless and finding the joy in the story anyway. And it's easy to find joy in a Monkey Island game. Return to Monkey Island is just as funny as ever, and its earnest corniness is still intact. There's all of the same eye-roll-inducing pun work and cheeky one-liners. A staple of the franchise is the constant subversion of expectations, where either puzzle solutions are as obvious as you'd expect or as convoluted as possible. Return manages to lampoon reality as well, with one major storyline focusing on Elaine, the aforementioned much, much better half to Guybrush, attempting to address a public health scare with an easy fix, backed by science and facts that no one seems to want to even bother with. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> <sighs> she's out to help fight back against the common pirate ailment scurvy, and she's grown an island full of limes to help, but no one wants to take them. It culminates brilliantly with the discussion about marketing, and a collision with tinfoil pirate hat wearing goons. Hey, that is a bunch of science nonsense! We won't have any of that around here! It's all a trick to track her plunder! The writing is clever and there's a lot of it. There are tons of dialogue options that you might miss in one playthrough where you'll be forced to pick from the best of a few goofy concepts and guybrush musings about things in the world that are just easy to miss. We recommend seeking out every line you can, properly examining everything in the world to fully appreciate how much is written for this grand return. It's maps wrapped in maps. I didn't know you could do that. But beyond the laughs, it's the more emotionally impactful stuff that surprised us. The game is as full of heart as much as it is adventure, reckoning with legacy, the passing down of stories and traditions. Monkey Island has always had heart at its core, but with 20 plus years of experience under their belts, Gilbert and Grossman and the entire team at Terrible Toy Box have a more mature slapstick pirate adventure in Return to Monkey Island. There's a lot of talk about nailing the ending of a story, as Guybrush reminisces over adventures of old and Gilbert reminisces on the issues he's had finishing games in the past of the difficulty and the complications that can arise in telling a story. This might be the last time we see Monkey Island and its wacky set of characters, and 
the first time the developers know they have a shot at nailing the ending that eluded them in the past. And they do. I can pinpoint the exact moment that a wry smile planted itself on my face and the tears started to well up when I realized what Gilbert and his team were doing with this game's ending. The emotions swelled as I witnessed the closing of the book, the turning out of the lights, and said goodbye. I will concede that it definitely hits harder for those who have experienced Skybrush's previous adventures, but Terrible Toy Box knows how to pluck those emotional strings well. And I'd say Return to Monkey Island's closing moments were a whole damn guitar solo. Sure, sure, story's important and all that, but it's time we talk about the high-octane point-and-click in action. How do those clicks feel? How does the puzzling work? As you might expect, Return to Monkey Island has done away with the verb-based action of adventure games of yore. The series hasn't had that for a while, but it was surprising still not to see even a throwback system reminiscent of it at all. No looking, picking up, pushing, pulling, or talking. Instead, everything's replaced with a simple, contextual, two-action system. This makes for a much more straightforward point-and-click experience. Hovering over interactable items in the environment offers up one or two actions. Sometimes a second only comes after you initially poke at something. These usually break out between, what is this, and interact with this. Previous titles were plagued with the issue of identifying important items and figuring out exactly how the game wanted you to interact with them. Return has no such problem, as the game dictates exactly what can be interacted with further. Ultimately, this makes Return to Monkey Island a much easier game than its predecessors. With the more straightforward gameplay system, the puzzles do get to be a little more clever, and everything just feels so much more intuitive than usual. I never really struggled too much in my playthrough, but I did have a ton of exciting aha moments when puzzles clicked, which makes for an infinitely more enjoyable play experience than something with obscure puzzle solutions that are just frustrating to discover in the end. Not to say that the game didn't have a few eye rollers, but those proved to be slight bumps in the road of an otherwise enjoyable experience. Terrible Toy Box does a few things to make it even more accessible if you aren't a traditional adventure game fan, too. A series staple since Monkey Island 2, there are difficulty options, casual and hard, that, with the harder difficulty, adds steps to puzzles and overall makes things a little more complicated. On top of that, there's a fun in-game solution for those who need a little nudge towards puzzle solutions. A living hint book that the voodoo lady gives you early on. These hints start vague and ramp up in specificity if you need that extra bit of help, making for a as-you-need-it kind of hint system. Whether you're writing the proper apology on a frog, learning to swab the deck, trying to trick a judge, or generally using Guybrush's charms to get your way, all of the core action and puzzles are just damn fun. Oh, that bird needs an attitude adjustment. So we're finding joy in the narrative, we're finding joy in the gameplay. What else brings joy in Return to Monkey Island? Pre-release, there was much ado about the game's unique art style. Art director Rex Krell, fresh off of his work as creative director on Nights and Bikes, brought his distinct, angular, and vibrant illustrated style to the table, and it, for some reason, shocked the world. The discourse surrounding it nearly chased Ron Gilbert off the internet, as gamers continued to prove that they can be the worst, calling the game ruined among other horrible things because of the new style. And I just don't get it. Return to Monkey Island is stunning. With a sea-inspired color palette and a few perfect modern lighting techniques, iconic locales like Melee Island beautifully transformed. Funny enough, the game's gorgeous painted backgrounds are reminiscent of LucasArts adventure game classics like Day of the Tentacle and Sam and Max Hit the Road. They're bold, colorful, and dense, translating perfectly for the genre. Kral's work is vibrant and charming from afar, 
but some of the game's cutaways with moments of focused grotesqueness are even more satisfying. There are entire sequences that feel ripped out of classic Ren and Stimpy era cartoons in all the right ways. The truest compliment I could deliver on this game's art style is that I want my walls plastered with several full screen illustrations from this game. In motion, Return is dripping with character. Inventory items shimmer and shake, background elements flow and breathe, and characters swing their arms around with puppet-like animation. But none of that can come alive, not the writing, the art, or the gameplay itself, without the vocal artists that breathe life into these characters. Return to Monkey Island is full of top-notch performances. It feels like Dominic Armato and Alexandra Boyd, the longtime voice actors for Guybrush and Elaine respectively, haven't skipped a beat. And newcomers like Jess Harnell as LeChuck, replacing retired series veteran Eric Bowen. Blah, blah, blah. Jim Peary as Flambe. Never. Annie Q. Rigel as Captain Lila. Keep talking and you'll find out how good I am. And many others just feel so much part of the family that it's as if they've been there since the beginning. And to complete the auditory package, Return to Monkey Island's bustling sea shanty inspired score hits the mark once again. Clint Bajakian, Michael Land, and Peter McConnell's piratey score perfectly elevate each scene and bring the final layer of personality needed for each new location. Add in the unique layered track variants that take a location soundscape and give it a new flair, like the Scumbar's classic orchestrated track getting a punk tilt, electric guitars and all when you're around the new pirate leaders. It's a fun way to inject some life into an already iconic score and it again just helps to elevate the personality of each scene. It took a lot to return to Monkey Island. Like I said in my intro, there was a lot of hesitation that came with me starting this game. Media revivals are extremely hit and miss, and I couldn't stand to watch a franchise so close to me fall apart. But when the credits rolled, and I wiped the tears from my eyes, I realized why I was actually scared. It's because I already knew when I started that I didn't want it to be over. Video games are good. Return to Monkey Island is great. 9.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching this Video Games Are Good review. If you're interested in learning more about a review rubric or to read the text review, visit videogamesgood.com. There, you can join our Discord where you can discuss reviews and get early views at upcoming articles. You can check out our merch and generally stay tuned into everything happening around VGG. Thank you for supporting independent media. Speaking of independent media, this review was sponsored by Rinks, a traditional and digital illustrator working freelance, creating comics, and developing art for indie games. Her specialty lies in creating bouncy round creatures in her Star Chunk series, ethereal beings with her star babies, and in creating dreamlike watercolor designs. Rinks is also a part of Different Folks, a game development team that just released the Steam version of their award-winning game jam game, Different Strokes, where you and players around the world can wander an ever-expanding art gallery filled with Rinx's charming characters and the original, dynamic, and remixed canvases created by other players. Learn more at differentstrokes.xyz and consider picking it up on Steam. You can also check out her merch and art prints at rinxart.com. And of course, support small artists this holiday season.